please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Read along with me, word for word, verse by verse, of the scriptures that we'll be looking at today. Read along with me, be a Berean, search the scriptures daily, whether these things be so. Read along with me, because the mouth will go quicker than the brain, sometimes. Uh, so, keep an eye on Get your authorized version, and read along with me. In this video, we're going to let the scripture talk for itself, pretty much. Okay? We all know what today is. We all know. And I, there is evidence out there galore and um, about refuting this Roman Catholic pagan day that is not sanctified in Scripture. And when you say, don't judge me in... Uh, uh, in, a, in regards of a holy day. The holy days in context are the ones that are specifically given in Scripture, not man-made ones, dear friends. But, but, 2 Timothy chapter 3, familiar verses. Verses 1 on to verse 5. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. Covetous. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12. All things are lawful unto me. Some of these Christians will go to this to use this as a license. And unfortunately, uh, God's word is true. That's not unfortunate. But when you come to this to defend something that you know deep in your heart has nothing to do with our Lord, and you go to this to justify what you're doing, yoking yourself up with that whore today, shame on you, because it's indisputable. You're right. All things are lawful unto me. You're right. You can go ahead, saint. You could go ahead and do anything that a lost person can do. Yes, you can. The Lord is not holding a gun to your head. Remember, we've talked about that at length, okay? But, you know, you, you get your little pen, circle that but. All things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me. But I will not be brought under the power of any. The spirit of this time of year. Have you seen it? Yesterday I went to the Wally World, had to get me a toothbrush. You needed to know that. And, uh, oh, wow, dude. You know, you, just being around, it's like, ah, ah. Wow. Check the halls, buddy. Back to 2 Timothy chapter 3. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. All things are lawful for me. You're right. But shame on you to go into scripture to make a license for something that if you were honest with the Lord and yourself, I mean, even Christians, when you talk to them about this day particularly, uh, not all of them, but uh, a majority that I have talked to about this, it's like, well, we, yes, this isn't his actual day when he came into the, to the world. It's like, okay, 
You can admit that. Okay, that's that's a good start. Then why still do it? Tradition! <laughs> and then where do they go? They go to uh, First Thessalonians. Keep the traditions. It's funny. Ha <laughs> ha, no it isn't. Why do some Christians who claim to be enemies of the whore use the very arguments that come from the whore to defend one of their two biggest hol holy days? I know, holiday, holy days. I'm saying it that way purposely, okay? Why? It, it doesn't make sense to me. But all things are lawful for you. For men shall be lovers of their own selves. We've always done this. It's, it's tradition, man. And then they go to First Thessalonians to justify it. Just as if I. Yeah. Covetous. Oh, it starts with the covetous. I want, I want, I want. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. <laughs> Boasters. All things are lawful for me. I can do what I want to do. Yes, you can. Bravo. Proud. Blasphemers. To attribute this thing that comes from Rome unto our Lord. I'll let you figure that one out. Disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, squid love their own. Truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, and there's only one who's good. And that ain't you, and that definitely ain't me. Okay? <laughs> yeah, okay. Despisers of those that are good. Traitors, heady, high-minded. I'm not as bad as so-and-so. I have every right to do this. Nah, 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 nah. Fine. Go ahead. Go ahead. Lovers of pleasures. More than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away! Because what do they say? 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 23. All things are lawful for me. Yes, they are. Never denied that. Can't. It's right there. But all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. The arguments are out there. The facts are out there. You want to do it? That's on you. Is it going to send you to hell? No, it isn't. But see, it's really difficult, personally, for me to take someone seriously when someone goes on the war path against the whore, as a saint should, but yet hold arm in arm with the whore on one of two of the biggest day unto the whore. And I can't prove this. This is just a theory. You people, you Christians that are going to be left behind go through the great tribulation, that man of sin, the son of perdition. This day, this date, you Christians who are left behind, you watch. This day is going to be significant, I believe, for that man of sin, the son of perdition. I would not be surprised at all that when he is revealed after we get out of here, that it will come to pass and come to be known that he was born on this date. 
you Christians that get left behind going to go through the great tribulation after the body of Christ gets redeemed. Yeah, you watch. You watch. I'm not a betting man. I'm not a betting man. But and speaking of that, go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel. It's interesting because everything that was read today in my morning devotional with our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, I'm sharing with you. Ezekiel 28, you know these. Some of you don't. Ezekiel 28, verses 11 on verse 19. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, Take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus. What about this king of Tyrus? He was pretty well uh, puffed up in his heart. You read verse 2. Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, Thus saith the Lord God, Because thine heart is lifted up. Yeah. Because thine heart is lifted up, And thou hast said, I am a capital G God. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. All things are lawful for me. And they are. You can do whatever a lost person can do, saint. <laughs> Bravo. Uh. And has said, and thou hast said, I am a God. Capital G. I said in the seed of God. In the midst of the seas, yet thou art a man, just a man, and not God. Though thou set thine heart as the heart of God. Oh, that, what a statement. Now let's continue. Verse 12 again. So the man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. And what wisdom is this? Is this the wisdom that is fear of the Lord? No, this is the wisdom that is first earthly, sensual, devilish. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Now, King Tyrus was not in Eden, the Garden of God. And here's something that some of you need to remember. The original location of the Garden of Eden cannot be known. There are some out there that's like, well, we know where the Garden No, you don't. Uh, there's one little thing that when people say stuff about this, about, you know, um, you know, well, we know where the Garden of Eden is, and we know, you know, we know where the Garden of Eden is. You know what they're not putting into that uh, equation? The flood! Okay? The flood! Okay? The continents as we have them today are not the continents that were before the flood, people. Okay? The, the earth broke up and the fountains went shooting into the sky. You know, there's uh, rocks on the moon from earth. From the flood because it shot up there okay so you don't we don't know where the actual Garden of Eden was because those and those people well we know where it was no you don't you're not putting into the equation the flood and how the entire entire earth was changed because of the flood okay we don't know where the real Garden of Eden was okay so so, with that said, this is after the flood, obviously. So, thou hast been in Eden, the Garden of God. Now, there were four in the Garden of Eden. There was the Lord, our Father, Adam, Eve, and that old serpent, the devil, Satan. This is a veiled reference to Satan. Just like what the Lord did with Peter. When Peter, when uh, Matthew 23, verse 16, when uh, Peter's like, Lord, you ain't going to die. But yet they were looking forward to the cross. 
<laughs> Nonsense. He's like, what does the Lord do? Get thee behind me, Satan. Who was manipulating Peter in that situation? Thou hast been in, in Eden, the garden of God. He's talking about Satan, who was controlling Tyrus. Obviously, because Tyrus said in his heart, I am a god. You shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. All things are lawful for me. Every precious stone was thy covering. Beautiful to look at. Last night I was walking around thinking it's like the psychology of all this stuff. The glamour, the glitz. Look at the Roman Catholic Church. The pageantry, the showmanship, the showbiz of it all. The, the facade of Christianity. Look at it. It's, it's, it's entertainment, man. It's a professional wrestling angle. I'm coming home, it's like, this is professional wrestling. It's, it's theater. It's theater. Uh, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, and the jasper, and the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold, the workmanship of thy tabrets and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. All those beautiful visual stimuli looking stones. No marvel, Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. As we have talked about on many occasions, sin is made to look beautiful to you. Aren't those stones beautiful, huh? Think about it, man. All those pretty lights, all those beautiful glory. And you know what? They do what they're supposed to do with the visual stimuli and with the connectors in the brain and whatnot. That's actual scientifically proven about how the pretty lights and the flashings and the swirlings and all the jibber jabber colors, all those things. Yeah. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. And I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created. Satan is a created being. Don't you ever forget that. He's not omniscient, not omnipresent, not, not omnipotent. Okay? Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the day that thou wast created till iniquity was found in thee. By the multitude of thy merchandise, the smorgasbord, they have filled thee with the mist of violence. And thou hast sinned. Therefore will I cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the mist of the stones of fire. Thine heart... I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. It doesn't look so good. Doesn't sin look so good, huh, right, man? Yeah. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee. Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities. By, thy, by the iniquity of thy traffic, with a K. Therefore will I bring traffic, with a K. Look at all this smorgasbord, how the, the false prophets run to the front on every corner, like in Proverbs 7. Therefore will I bring, thee, bring forth a fire from the mist of thee, from within. Self-destruction. Interesting thought, huh? We are our, oh, our worst enemies most of the time, aren't we? And those of Satan, they are their own worst enemies too. It shall devour thee, and I will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee. All they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee. Thou shalt be a terror, and never shalt thou be any more. Hmm. Hmm. 
Psalm 106. Psalm 106. Like I said, I'm sharing with you everything that I read today in devotional time with the Lord. I'm just sharing it with you. And because of Satan and all his beauty and all those precious stones that cover him, the glamour, the glitz, the angel of light that he transforms himself into, and no marvel that his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. Check out the shorts. The last video at that disgusting Free Methodist Church building in, in Galilee, in a Galilee far, far away. It's like, you disgusting pagan heathens. Disgusting. Make me argh, puke every time like that. Puke! Psalm 106, 13 on to verse 15. But what happens? They soon forget his works. They waited not for his counsel, but lusted exceedingly in the wilderness and tempted God in the desert. What are we reading to? On to verse 15. Tempted God in the desert. And he gave them their request. All things are lawful for you. They are. That cannot be denied. That cannot be denied. But it's grotesque when these Christians and some saints use it as a crutch, a license. Because yes, I could, as a saint, waltz right out that door, go to a Hollywood movie. I could go right out that door, go to a bar. I could go right out that do door and do anything, anything, because we have free will. All things are lawful for, for you. Yes, they are. Not all things are expedient, and they don't all edify. And be careful. And he gave them their request, but sent leanness into their soul. You know, you can deny and twist the scriptures all you want to, Christian. The undeniable fact is, today, all things are lawful for you, not denying that. Today, You are yoking yourself up with the Vatican. And you expect to be taken seriously when attacking the Vatican, when you will defend your God-given right to yoke yourself up with them on one of their biggest days, which I personally believe, as I've already shared, is going to be very significant to that man of sin, the son of perdition. Whatever, dude. Do this. It's on you. And while we're in Psalm 106, 34 on verse 39. They did not destroy the nations concerning whom the Lord commanded them, but were mingled among the heathen and learned their works. And they served their idols, which were a snare unto them. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils. It's all about the kids. It's all about the kids. Lie to the kids. Give them a false pretense. Get them gifts. It's all about the gifts. The more you get, the more gifts you give, the more love you show. In the last days. And, and wasn't that interesting in 2 Timothy, what we looked at? Okay, what was the very first, what was the thing that led, all, that began that procession of things? Uh, verse 2 in chapter 3, For men shall be lovers of their own selves. I, 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 me, me, me. I will, I will, I will, I will, I will. Covetous. 
covetous, living vicariously through their children, making little devils, excuse me, idols out of your children. You need to be very careful, son, about what you're just as if I ing for those children of yours. Yea, they sacrificed their sons and their daughters unto devils, and shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and their daughters, whom they sacrificed unto the idols of Canaan, or Canaan. And the land was polluted with blood. Thus were they defiled with their own works, and went a whoring with their own inventions. As I have said on several occasions, several, I would be a little bit more respectable to some of these people if they would just at least acknowledge, at least, this day is not sanctified by scripture, no matter how bad and how hard you try to twist it and say a passage of scripture is only applicable with one thing and you can't, it can't be used for any other kind of instruction or unrighteousness or anything like that. That's, that's dangerous to do that. If some of these guys would just get off their high horse, and look you, look you in the eye and say, yes, this day was created by the devil. It is a Roman Catholic holy day. And I'm saying it that way purposely. I know the distinction, but look at what they've made it into. Okay. Yes, this is pagan. No, it is not sanctified by scripture. Yes, it came from Rome. Yes, it is a glorification of covetousness. Yes, it is. But you know what? I'm going to do it anyway, even though I know what it is. I would have more respect for a man, woman, knowing the truth. And you can deny it all you want. I've seen it. I've experienced it. Okay? Just as if I go to, well, you're judging me and meet on a holy day. Don't, but Paul, Paul's... Paul is talking about referencing the actual scriptural holy days. Okay? And you taking this Roman Catholic pagan day and putting it on the same level of the scriptural holy days? I've seen it. So have you. The Lord rebuke you. Sorry. I'm not really, but sorry. Like I said, if some of these guys, some of these women would just at least do that. Yeah, I know it's I know it's from Rome. I know it's pagan. I know. I know that. But you know what? We did it when I was a kid, and that's see it's the, it's all about the feeling of it. It's all about the feeling of it. And see, when you try to justify a feeling rather than fact. Just as if I, just as if I. I, I know this isn't, I mean, this will eventually end. I mean, I remember in the book of Revelation, when they kill uh, Moses and Elijah, what are they going to be doing when Moses and Elijah get killed? Oh, they're going to be giving gifts. There ain't nothing wrong with giving gift people gifts. There's nothing wrong with that. I know that's set off that. That little twit, too. <laughs> never mind. Who owes a lot of people an apology? Which we'll never get because... Never mind, never mind. I hope that, I hope that kid's doing well for himself. I really do. I really do. Zechariah. Zechariah chapter 1. Like I said, everything I'm sharing with you, the Lord showed me today in morning devotional time with him. Zechariah chapter 1, verses 2 on to verse 6. The Lord hath been sore displeased with your fathers. 
Therefore say thou unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts. Turn ye unto me, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will turn unto you. This is for our instruction in righteousness. Saith the Lord of hosts, Be ye not as your fathers, unto whom the former prophets have cried, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Turn ye now from your evil ways, and from the ev and from your evil doings. But they did not hear nor hearken unto me, said the Lord. Your fathers, where are they? And the prophets, do they live forever? But my words and my statutes, which I commanded my servants the prophets, did they not take hold of your fathers? And they returned and said, Like as the Lord of hosts thought to do unto us according to our ways and according to our doings, so hath he dealt with us. Second Kings twenty three. Second Kings twenty three. Josiah. Josiah. Verses twenty four on to verse twenty seven. Moreover, this is talking about King Josiah. Moreover, the workers with familiar spirits and the wizards and the images, and the idols, and all the abominations that were spied in the land of Judah and in Jerusalem, did Josiah put away, that he might perform the words of the law which were written in the book of Hilkiah, the priest found in the house of the Lord. And like unto him, was there no king before him that turned to the Lord with all his heart and with all his soul? And with all his might, according to all the law of Moses, neither after him, neither after him, arose there any like him. Notwithstanding, the Lord turned not from the fierceness of his great wrath. You got to remember King Manasseh, or Manasseh, um, the son of Hezekiah the son of the 15 years given on to Hezekiah when he wept sore. It's like, don't, don't take me yet, Lord, okay? Manasseh, or Manasseh, I believe he's in heaven. He repented, okay? Under the dispensation of the law, of the law yes, but I believe King Manasseh, one of the worst kings in the history of all Israel. And when he got back out of captivity, he tried. But see, what happened was, because of what Manasseh had done, that ingrained idolatry at his behest could not be undone, could not be reversed. America is so far gone. There ain't no chance for America. But for the individual that is within this nation or in your nation, wherever you are, that's the hope. On a whole, in its totality, this world is gone. There ain't no coming back. But see, that's the thing. Okay? Josiah, right there, we have the testimony. One of the greatest kings. But see, the damage done, the prolonged damage, that wearing of the stones, that instruction in iniquity, the price. Notwithstanding, the Lord turned not from the fierceness of his great wrath, wherewith his anger was kindled against Judah, because of all the provocations that Manas, Manasseh, Manas, Manas, Manasseh, Manasseh had provoked him withal. See, and Manasseh, he's in heaven. But see, the consequence of all that idolatry and how it was ingrained in the people. But see, individually, brethren, that's the thing. See, under the law, it was more so geared at the nations. In this dispensation, it's 
mano y mano. See? And the Lord said, I will remove Judah also out of my sight, as I have removed Israel, and will cast this city, Jerusalem, which I have chosen, and will cast off this city, Jerusalem, which I have chosen, and the house of which I said, my name shall be there. And Josiah was what? A good king. And God staved off that time. But see, again, because of the damage that was done, the people had gone past the point where they cannot return. Not that the Lord couldn't have mercy or save them, but they, it's not at gunpoint, people. It's not at gunpoint. Okay? It isn't. It isn't. And let's finish with one of my one of my favorite portions of scripture. Second Timothy chapter four. Verses two on to verse four. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Be ready. I don't take this with me. I got other scriptures that I do. Dude, always have a sword on you. Always. If it's in your car, that's good. It should be on your person. But if you like, if you're out shopping and at least you have a sword in your car, that's good, but in the moment the Lord opens something up, what good is that set of scriptures going to be doing in your car when you're in the store and you need it right then and there? I'm, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Be ready. Expect the unexpected. Last night I was you know putting uh, gospel tracks on cars. And the one guy, you know, I've, you get in, I get in a zone when I'm tracking, you know, just dun, 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 doing that kind of thing. And then somebody's like, Do, you don't need to put that in the car, just put it on the hood. And I'm like, huh? And it, it like distracted me. And uh, he didn't ask any questions. He's just like, you know, you can go up ahead and put it on the hood. And it's like, well, here. And he's like, don't waste your time. It's like, well, here, take it. Save me the trouble. He's like, okay. And then he looked at it, he's like, well, thank you. And then, of course, you know. But anyway, be ready. Be ready. Preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and feelings <laughs> and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned onto fables. <laughs> That's going to be it for this little video today. I, I, I really don't want to badger people about it because it's, our, it's, the, it's out there, it's done, the truth is there, all things are lawful for you. God's not holding a gun at your head. Is it going to put you in hell? No, but the way you reflect the Lord serves him. And dude... No, you know, dude, you can you can do what you want. Be careful, twisting scripture and trying to justify something that has nothing to do with the Lord at all. You gotta be careful with that, man, woman. You gotta be careful with that. Okay, all right. Look, like I said, I would have more respect for a man if they just just. Just admit to the facts. Do that publicly. Quit twisting the scripture to just as if I, something that is not authorized in scripture and that scripture does not condone. Just, just admit it. Just admit it. You know, it's pagan. It's from Rome. It's glorifying the devil, not the true Lord God, our Father. It's based off of a lie anyway. 
but you're going to do it anyway. I, like I said, I got more respect for someone. And I've added, you know, to, you know, it's like, you know, Brad, I just, you know, I grew up with it. Fine. Fine. You, you, you making, you've made the choice. You, and uh, just some of them, it's like, I, yeah, I know. But, you know, it's, it's a time of, it's feeling, it's emotion, it's that kind of stuff. Fine, dude. Fine. Fine. Go ahead. Knock yourself out. Knock yourself out. Go ahead and put on a couple of extra 10 pounds while you're at it. Go right ahead. But stop trying to twist something that comes from the devil himself and try to put it in here and say that it's, it's okay. Okay? But yet it is because all things are lawful for you, right? So anyway, that's, that's going to be it for today. Thank you for watching this if you do. Uh, check out our brother's uh, video, which will be in the description box. Uh, uh, another brother who, uh, who I share a unique kindred tie with. Remember, I'm over 60% um, Spaniard, so. But uh, left a really good comment, a really, really good comment in the video there. Brother, if you see that, that that's, he's, don't worry about that guy. Okay, don't worry about that guy. <laughs> it's a good comment. That's a great comment. So anyway. Love y'all. Thank you for watching this if you do. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.